Hello, my name is Trey. Welcome to What Kind of Change. Today, we're going to be talking about, you know him, Kevin Samuels. He makes an interesting point on a video I was watching, and I thought I might go ahead and show that to you guys. Let me go ahead and get that for you. We're going to have winning kind of guys be like, yeah, yeah, do that, do that. You know the guys who are going to throw it at you? The guys who don't want to do the work. Guys that don't want you to put, make it so hard for them. Then of course they're gonna call you all these things. Look at him, you over there trying to be opportunistic and you over there trying to schmooze and you over there trying to glad hand. I'm gonna keep it real. It's always the keep it real dudes. What they're really saying is I want, to, I want you to stay down here. I don't want you to shine so bright it makes it hot on me. Could you, could you not be so good? Could you, could you not shine so bright? Could you not make me look like I'm just average and mediocre? That's what's at the basis of all this other kind of stuff. And I get so tired of guys who are smart, who are accomplished, who are capable, who have the stuff that it takes dumbing themselves down to make other people feel better. So as you can see, that's what this video is about. Dumbing yourself down to make other people feel better. So this is a concept that you might see also. I'm going to let him talk a little bit more. Um, but let me, let me, let me, let me wrap to y'all right quick. Speaking of that. <clears throat> Christmas is just around the corner. So you know what you should do? I I, I don't have any sponsors. So like I was going to say, um, <clears throat> if you're dumbing yourself down, you're making a fool of yourself. See, something that I, I noticed growing up, I was a square growing up. I'm a square today, right? And a lot of times when I got around certain dudes, they, they tried to be, I wouldn't even say hood because I grew up in the country, but they tried to be, you know, wearing the, kind of the baggy clothes, kind of wearing their hat sideways. That was the big thing where I grew up, you know, flat brim hat turn, maybe have on a nice little watch, jacked up trucks and all this stuff. And they didn't do well in school, right? These were just your average kids who didn't try. And I remember I knew I could do the work, but I used to dumb myself down because I, didn't, I was so afraid of being called a square. I was so afraid of being called this. And when I got in college, I was really a square, right? And I remember having to think, man, I would talk to the basketball players in college and they were the cool guys, right? They were the guys out there partying and having all this stuff and all this guy, and getting drunk and all this stuff. And I, I, I hated that I felt like such a square around them, right? But to me, it's like I was making good grades. I was in honors college. I felt like I needed to dumb myself down, even in college, to be cool. So some of the women would like me and all this stuff. And it's dumb. Don't dumb yourself down for nobody. If you're smart, if you're bright, if you feel like you're good at what you do, do it. He's going to say something else that I really, really uh, agree with. Listen to me when I tell you this. Man, there have been so many times that guys have thought, if I just failed, if I just failed, they like me more. And what you're going to find is if you fail, you become just like the people that you think would like you more. They're going to not, they're going to still not like you. Matter of fact, they're going to resent you. They're going to say, look. I understand why I'm a failure. I understand why I didn't do it. But look, he had all these opportunities. He ended up right here. You don't do them any favors by failing. You know what you do? You go ahead and become the man you need to be. You go ahead and get up to the top, the top of the top, 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 the tippy, tippy top. You get your name up on Mount Rushmore. You, you climb Everest. You make as much. You go as high. You go as far as you can and let the haters stand outside and call you whatever outside of the gates. That's right, outside the gates of your mansion, outside, while you're flying on your G6, let them call you all that crap from coach or on the bus. I'm a firm believer in this. That's why I was gonna make notes on this, but I'm sorry, I'm just going off the cuff because I have seen this stuff so much in my life. I've had the people throw stuff like that at me, but you know what, I've never had somebody doing better than me call me any of this stuff. And it's one of the things, it's one of the few things that you can rest assured that if you want to be better than 90% of people, you're going to have people throw shit at you. They're going to do it. They're going. Guys, listen, listen, y'all go check out that video. Amazing video. Y'all know Kevin. And this is, I want to say this before I continue. One thing that's so frustrating about uh, when I think about Kevin is just that people only know him because he was he was talking about women and it's like man y'all are really sorry that 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 lighting is bothering me uh there we go uh, what bothers me is that they didn't understand the kevin before all that they think that kevin was only this guy who talked to women he was talking to young men way before he talked to women on the phones but everybody misses all the good stuff he talks about and i remember them making videos um hating on him 
And I understand Kevin wasn't perfect. I get it. If you don't even agree with him. But I remember somebody made a video on him talking about how when he was 20 years old, he was a deadbeat dad. I'm like, he's 52 now. I mean, damn. Can we grow up a little bit? You ain't got to agree with everything he did. But I mean, I just hate people who always try to go out of the way to tear somebody down because they don't like what they're saying. I get it. If, if you look deep into anybody's past, I promise you, you're going to find some skeletons in the closet. Everybody. So why do it? If he feels like he was helping us men, let him do it. But people hated him so bad that they would go into his closet and try to dig up everything like how he did. Somebody brought up that he didn't graduate from college when Kevin himself said that he didn't graduate from college because he got cancer. He said it and people brought it up like, oh, he's a liar. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. He said he went to school for chemical engineering. That's what he was going to do. He got cancer. He dropped out. End of story. I mean, anyway. Back to the story at hand. I want to say this. When it comes to trying to be successful in life, I can say I have not had anywhere the kind of success that most people probably, not most people, I haven't had the kind of success that most people who are obviously millionaires have had, people who are big on YouTube. I've never seen that success. But what I can say is in my normal civilian life, I have been successful. I have been the top salesman. I have been the number one agent. If you ever worked at a floor that has agents, right? Like a call center or something. I was the number one agent. Great, graduated number one in my class, training class, number one on the floor. I became a supervisor. I was top five in sales the entire time I was a salesman. I have gotten all these awards before. And I'm, I'm really good at when, I, when it comes to my job, okay? And there were so many people, I mean, so many people who hated me. And to be fair, to be fair to them, I, I wasn't trying to be arrogant, but I knew what I know what I know. You know what I mean? I'm not saying I know everything, but when I know something, I promise you, if I know something, I know it, especially when it comes to my job. I told you guys how I treat my job. I treat my job like I'm going to get fired. I treat all my jobs like if I don't do my very best, they're going to fire me. So I never get lazy. But some people used to come in my face because I was number one and I was doing all these great things. I was getting award after award after award. And people would just be like, oh, he's this, he's that. And then when I try to help them and be like, oh, actually, it's this. They'd be like, nobody wants to listen to you, Trey. And I remember people would try to beat me out. I remember my boss coming to me and I told her, I said, so we had this big old board, right, that showed the number one agents on the board. So you can see who's doing the best in this area, who's doing the best in this area, who's doing the best in this area. I told my boss, I said, one day I'm going to be on that board. Because there was like, I think it was 50 of us. Nothing crazy. But I said, I'm going to be number one on that board. Not number one. I didn't say that. I said, I'm going to be on the board, which you have to be top three to get on the board. And my boss looked at me and said, good luck. I was number one from the day I got on the floor to the day I got promoted. I never was not on that board, but she doubted me. And I just, I re I'm not saying she was a bad person, but there are certain things that stick with you. And I remember that sticking with me, her thinking that I was just some bum because I, I, because I don't know why she thought that actually, I don't know what it was. I don't know why she doubted me. She just thought her agents were so much better than me. But when I stepped on the floor, I changed life. It, I was just that dude. You know, but it's not because it's not because I was arrogant and cocky. It's because I thought to myself, I have to be my best not to get fired. That's just how that's how I go into all my jobs. And other people, they go into the job expecting it. They act like having a job is a privilege. I mean, it's um, they act like having a job is just given to them like they deserve it. It's like, no, you don't deserve jack. You should be happy you got a job. I know that sounds silly, but if I was working at McDonald's, you'd be damn sure I'd be the best damn McDonald's worker you've seen. I would try to get every order right out on time fast as I could, give the best customer service I possibly could. Because that stuff matters. Because I know what it's like not to have a job. I know what it's like to be very broke. I was homeless. I know what it's like to be on the streets and have nowhere to go. Okay, I know what it's like sleeping in the cold. I know exactly what it's like sleeping in the heat. Okay. I remember sleeping. I was so hot and I'm not trying to be vulgar. I remember sleeping in a small, a small little uh, shack. It was so hot. I'm from Texas now. It was about 100 degrees. It was so hot and I had no AC. I had to literally sleep naked to keep myself from sweating through my clothes. I was that broke. I remember sleeping in the winter. So damn cold. 
I, when I, we, I didn't have any hot water, but I could take a cold shower, right? Guys, man, I had to wash my clothes in the shower. Didn't have no washing machine or anything like that. I had no lights, no electricity. I was just cold. I know what it's like to have not have a job. And I, it, I take everything so damn seriously. But people see that from me and they think, oh, I'm trying to be cocky. I'm trying to be this. I'm trying to be that. It's like, no, man, I'm trying to be the best that I can be. And just like Kevin said, those, some people try to bring you down like you're making me look bad because you're so good. That's not my problem. I got to take care of me and my family. I got to eat. We got to eat. And I eat good, baby. That's the point. Okay? So I, I'll do anything I can for my family. I'll do everything I can for my family and keep myself from getting fired. You know how, you know how much it would hurt my heart if me and my wife got evicted and she was sitting on the streets? You don't think that goes through my mind every day? I don't care how successful I get. I'm not saying have a poor mentality. I'm not saying have a, uh, what do they call it? Uh, what do they call that mentality? Y'all put it in the comments if you remember. But I'm not saying have a, I'm going to lose it all mentality. Don't think like, you like, don't be so hoarding of your money and be so hoarding of your time because you're afraid you're going to lose it. I'm not saying do that. But what I am saying is just work, work like you never had it and it'll keep coming. That's how I treat my life and my job. But I never let myself get out of the mindset of, oh, the money is always going to be here. Oh, I'm always going to have a job. Oh, everything's going to go perfect. No, I, I think realistically, like, well, what would happen if YouTube went away? What would happen if I lost my job? What would happen if this? If these things happen, it would have to be because of something tragic happened. Or, I mean, they had to let me go because they had no other choice. But I will not let them say, Trey, he just was not good enough at this job to do it. Okay. That's the words I never, ever in my life want to hear. I've heard that twice when I was a young man. Two times I heard somebody come to me and say, Trey, you're terrible at your job. We got to let you go. I cannot let that happen again. And I, I never forget those moments of just continuing and continuing and continuing. And that's the one thing that YouTube gives me because I'm a complete fucking failure on YouTube. A complete fucking failure when it comes to YouTube. I have 1600 subscribers and I've been doing YouTube for five years. It, I am a failure because of my inconsistency and I won't let that happen again. As long as is God willing, if I'm able to make YouTube videos, if I'm able to do research, if I'm able to put in time, watch these videos, make notes, do all this other stuff, watch these boring ass court dates, that I love, but I know y'all think they're boring, but I watch them and try to make these videos entertaining in the little bit of money that I'm making right now. It's still money. Okay. It's still money. And I treat you two just like I treat my jobs. I show up every day. I show up every day, Monday through Friday. You're going to get, you're going to get three damn videos Monday through Friday and maybe some on the weekend, but I give everything I have. And if one day I get to a hundred thousand subscribers and you hear me talking arrogantly, Please know it's not me being cocky. Please know it's me thinking one thing in my head. 100,000 subscribers don't mean a fucking thing if I get copyrighted out, copyright striked out, not copyright striked, just get striked out or YouTube just goes away, okay? That's very unlikely that this happened. But every time I make a video, I don't care how many subscribers I have. Whether that be the 1600 I got now, or if I ever got to 100,000, and Lord forbid if I ever got to a million, all I'm going to see when I see those numbers is, Trey, you cannot mess this up. You cannot. You must treat every damn day like those million subscribers can it just one day be gone. And that's how that's why it's important to diversify my money. And that's why I still work a nine to five because I don't give a damn. OK, I'm always going to give it all I got. But life happens. So that's why I say, guys, don't dumb yourself down. Go be arrogant. You got to believe in yourself. And also, I want you to believe, like, if I don't work hard, who the hell is going to do it? If I don't work hard, who's going to work hard for me? And that's just how I see it. There ain't, no, there ain't no amount of money that would keep me from working. Right. I know some people want that lazy life, that job where they wake up every day and money just falls from the skies because they got so many subscribers. That's not me. I don't care how much money I make. <laughs> that money does not mean anything to me. It means everything for me and my family, but it's not enough to make me go, all right, I could take a break. Mm -mm, that's not how I live. I want to work hard until I can't no more, until God either calls me home or 
I'm just so old I can't move no more and I have to sit in the bed. That's when I stop. But until then, this is what I do. This is what I love. And that's what I'll continue to do. And that's what makes me so arrogant about the how the way I talk and all that. It's just because I know I'm willing to die for this shit, man. Not YouTube necessarily, but I'm willing to die to make it all happen for my family, to keep myself from going back to being homeless, to keep myself from going back to the streets. I don't want that to happen to my kids, man. I don't want that to happen to my kids. I don't want that to happen to my wife. I, can't, I would not be able to stomach myself if I let myself fail because of my incompetence. I can't do that to them. I'll tell you guys, I care about people way too much for me to watch my family go burning down with the ship because I was fucking lazy. I can't let that happen. So I take everything in my life serious. I think you should do the same. Goodbye.